Fast battleships are an interesting category of warship. What makes a battleship that happens to go fast into a fast battleship capitalization necessary? Is there some simple dividing line to keep in mind? Or is it more complex than that? It's an interesting question to ask. It should, of course, first be noted that fast battleship is something of an informal descriptor, less than an actual designation. This isn't like battleship or battle cruiser or cruiser. There is no ship classification for a fast battleship, at least in formal terms. To use the obvious example, the United States Navy doesn't have BB for battleship, and I don't know, FB or BF for fast battleship. And this is a navy that's very fond of different codes for ships. This doesn't stop ships from being designated fast battleships, either contemporary to their use or in layer documentation, mind you. It's just good to know that there isn't a real formal break between battleship and fast battleship, akin to battleships and battle cruisers. With that out of the way, the simplest way to describe a fast battleship is a battleship that prioritizes speed over firepower or armor without undue sacrifice of firepower or armor. The key thing to keep in mind here is that this is still a battleship, a ship fully intended to function in the role and doctrine of a battleship, and that is still armored akin to slower ships, if generally a bit lighter than an equivalent slow battleship design of the time. Where a battlecruiser makes noted sacrifices in armor or firepower, a fast battleship is supposed to only make minor sacrifices in those categories for the increase in speed. Over the years, this basic concept developed and changed and went through different stages. The core of it remained pretty much the same, though, throughout the end of battleship production. Right up to the Iowa and Montana designs, wherein you see the Iowas focus heavily on speed, compared to the Montana, which went far heavier on armor and firepower, at the cost of a relatively slower speed. Now, to keep this video simple, though it's still going to be fairly long, forewarning you here, I'm going to begin by splitting this up by era. Then we can start asking what the first fast battleship is. To begin, we naturally have to do the pre-Dreadnought era. This is a time where technology was advancing rapidly, if not quite to the extent it did in the 20th century. The first ships generally recognized as pre-dreadnoughts, instead of ironclads, were the Royal Sovereign class of the Royal Navy. Though the Majestic class is arguably the greater progenitor of things to come with twin turrets, but I digress. By the time the last of the pre-dreadnoughts, exemplified by the Lord Nelsons as an example, were completed not even 20 years later, they were drastically different ships, heavier armed, armored, and faster. But, is there an example of a genuine, fast battleship in this era? To answer that question, I'm going to focus almost exclusively on speed here. With the exception of second-class battleships, pre-dreadnoughts are a pretty homogenous grouping when it comes to firepower and armor. Some had a bit heavier guns, some a bit lighter. Some had heavier armor, some a bit lighter. There's a reason I harp on about the pre-dreadnought layout, and that's because they're generally pretty similar to each other. Some weird exceptions aside, looking at you, France, and don't think I don't see your pre-dreadnoughts hiding in the corner, Germany. To continue the earlier example, while the Lord Nelsons are in every metric superior to the Majestic, they still have the same four heavy guns, if improved ones, in the same two turret layout. Where does that leave us with speed, though? Well, Pre-dreadnoughts are going to very typically fall on a range of 16 to 19 knots, some of them a bit slower, some of them slightly faster. This is partially down to power plant limitations, as triple expansion engines had difficulties maintaining high speeds for long duration, and partially due to boilers just not being up to the high pressures needed for higher power. This does make it rather difficult to judge if any ship in the pre-Dreadnought era really qualifies as a fast battleship, though. When most of the ships are going the same speed, and any increase therein comes as a more general thing, instead of a sudden, my god, that battleship is 5 plus knots faster than all the others, sort of break, 
On top of the fact that, again, triple expansion engines don't really like being run at full power for long periods of time, when a traditional fast battleship is expected to actually use her speed, it's an era where it's a bit hard to actually call anything a proper fast battleship. There's really only one class of ship that comes to mind here that is substantially faster, can actually somewhat maintain the speed, and still really qualifies as a contemporary battleship. That is from Italy, and it's a ship I've mentioned before when I was covering German battle cruisers. The Italian Regina Elena class. These were ships that could, still on triple expansion engines, get up to 22 knots. This is blisteringly fast by pre-dreadnought standards, when about the fastest any other navy managed, reliably, was 19 knots, and the average was still more like 18. I've said it before, three to four knots of an increase in speed may not seem like much of a difference, but this really does start adding up on a fleet level. Provided you have a more than a couple ships that can reach that speed anyway. But, do these Italian marvels qualify as fast battleships in absolute terms? And are they the first fast battleships as a result? Well, they're certainly faster than any other pre-dreadnoughts, but they're still going to have at least some issues maintaining that speed for long stretches. And believe me, they certainly sacrificed a lot for that speed, having both relatively thin armor, just shy of about 10 inches here, and only two 12-inch guns. An absolute metric ton of 8-inch guns, but only two 12-inch. So, yeah, they're fast, but they do miss on the without undue sacrifice, part of a fast battleship. We'll come back to this later. For now, we'll move on to the Dreadnought era, where ships can actually be expected to make and maintain their top speed for lengthy periods of time. This is a fun era for contemplating fast battleships. Dreadnought herself was a fast battleship in comparison to pre-Dreadnoughts, and it was, indeed, her major advantage over pre-Dreadnoughts even more than her firepower increase. By using turbine propulsion, Dreadnought could consistently outspeed her rivals and maintain that advantage, allowing her to dictate the rules of engagement. It was her speed and her ability to maintain it that let Dreadnought leverage her greater firepower. But in the same way that pre-Dreadnoughts gravitated towards a standard speed, so too would Dreadnoughts. After that initial jump to 21 knots, that some navies admittedly took longer than others to reach, it kind of became the standard for battleships. To use the Royal Navy as an example, from Dreadnought straight through to the Iron Duke class, and the Revenge class for that matter, 21 knots was the standard speed that all battleships were expected to make. The same was largely true in most other navies, though as always, some exceptions do apply. Now, the Dreadnought era is where the first recognized fast battleships come in the Queen Elizabeth class of the Royal Navy, which are, in of themselves, something of an interesting conundrum. While certainly designed to be substantially faster than their contemporaries, and doing it without sacrificing firepower or protection for that speed, they're not quite as easy to look at as that implies. Again, they were designed and intended to be fast battleships, a fast wing of the battle fleet helping the battle cruisers out even. Their armor, protection, and firepower, while lighter than a hypothetical slow variant could have had, were still very firmly in the same area, exceeding it even, of other contemporary battleships. Unlike our Italian friends, which had sacrificed armor and firepower for their speed. All of this is why the QEs are considered the first fast battleships. All of it needs to be viewed through the lens that, in service, they never lived up to that lofty expectation. While they were designed for 25 knots, the QEs were often struggling to hit 24 in practice. Their squadron, as a whole, was more often limited to 23 knots because that was the fastest their slowest member could make. This is still faster than other Royal Navy battleships, and they're still fully battleships with no sacrifices for speed, but are they fast battleships in actual service? The historical record would say yes. Though it is good to note here 
that other navies were keeping up with them in speed, if not in firepower or armor. The Russians had the Gongoots, which can make 24 knots on trials. Actual service speed would likely be lower, though Russian historical records being what they are... They don't quite match up to the QEs, though, in that they had far thinner armor, only about 9 inches, 225 millimeters, and still only carry 12-inch, 305mm guns. And over in Japan, you had the Fuso and closely related Issei, which could make 23 knots while carrying 14-inch, 356mm guns and a 12-inch belt. These ships are, naturally, slower than the Queen Elizabeth's design speed and service speed in the case of the Japanese ships, while being lighter armored and carrying smaller guns. It arguably wouldn't be until the Italians came back into the scene with their one class of super dreadnoughts that the QEs could have a ship exceed them in most categories. Faster at 28 knots and armed with the same number of guns of the same 15 inch caliber. Lacking a bit in the armor department though. Had the Italians actually completed those ships, mind you, which they didn't. Because this is Italy and they have issues with money. There is one ship I'm not talking about here, which we'll get into in the next section, but she's post-war, and that's why I'm deliberately not talking about her here. Because we've reached the end of what I would consider the Dreadnought era, which really ends with World War I, even though a lot of these ships were held over after the end of the war. There were certain designs coming around at the end of the Great War that certainly qualified as fast battleships, but again, with that one exception, none of them would be completed. So, do we move on to the interwar and World War II era now? Not quite. I do need to detour here to Germany. The Grosse Kreuzer, the GKs, the battle cruisers. I'll be the first to admit that I'll jokingly call these ships proto-fast battleships. This isn't entirely without precedent. The Germans, with the GK designs, created ships that were vastly faster than any other capital ship with their level of armor protection. Even as early as the first, Vonderton, the Germans were making ships with battleship scale armor, if on the lighter side, that could comfortably outpace the QEs. This only got more impressive as time went on, the ships gaining heavier and heavier armor while also increasing in speed and firepower. Moreover, the Germans fully intended these ships to get caught in with the line of battle and blast away at battleships. Even if their role was still really meant to be a fast wing to counter British scouts, with the battle line role as a secondary, if very important, function. So are the GKs actually fast battleships? Much as I love them for what they are, no, not really. Though one could make a good argument of it. Remember, the key thing about a fast battleship that we've established here is that it must gain speed without major sacrifices in armor or firepower in comparison to contemporary designs. The GKs are fundamentally missing one piece of the puzzle. While doctrinally functioning as fast, light, battleships half the time, they were always lacking in firepower. Their armor and speed was gained at the cost of carrying fewer guns and lighter guns than their equivalent battleships. It makes them some weird middle ground between traditional British-style battlecruisers and fast battleships. Ships that carry more or less battleship-grade armor on hulls that outpace the Queen Elizabeth. Ships that can function as battleships in most of the ways that count, but ships that still sacrificed a lot for that speed discounting the final GK designs, where they started clawing background and firepower. Mackinson and Ursatz York were arguably reaching the point of being a fast battleship, in the same way Hood is arguably a fast battleship. And that will be the one time I mentioned Hood in this video, because I'm trying to stick with ships that are actually called battleships. As I insist on calling the GKs what the Germans call them, it should be apparent that they just aren't quite there and the Germans certainly thought so. They wouldn't have insisted on calling them cruisers if not. That's why I jokingly call them proto-fast battleships. Now, the final era to cover, which could really be called the Age of the Fast Battleship. With the Washington Treaty kneecapping capital ship construction, 
you only really had two classes of ships that could be considered fast battleships before you enter into the treaty designs. The QEs and the Japanese Nagato class. The former we've already covered, the latter I'll briefly look at here and is the ship I alluded to earlier. Nagato is a ship that can make between 26 and 27 knots of speed as built, with a belt of 12 inches at the thickest. And she could do this while also carrying eight 16.1 inch, 41 centimeter guns. This makes her in every metric but for a slight, and I'm talking one inch slight, deficit in armor, superior to the Queen Elizabeth. Nagato is, as such, a good candidate for a fast battleship of the 1920s, though not even a decade later, technology would march right on past her and leave her sitting in the back with the QEs. Not helped by her refit actually slowing her down. That decade, of course, being the era of the treaty battleships. One and all, these would be ships that were faster than any, completed, it should be noted, battleships before them. Maybe not faster by much, in some cases, but still faster. It's at this time where the term fast battleship comes into its own, largely in comparison to the old World War I era ships that had hung around because of the treaty systems. These treaty ships ranged from 27 knots to the speedy Iowas at 33 knots. While the first of these ships to be completed, the French Dunkirks, are a bit of a weird one, really thin armor intended more for countering the Panzer Schiff, they technically count, much as some like calling them battlecruisers. They're classed as battleships, and if their armor was more to the lighter end, well, that's still what the French called them, so that's what I will call them. The next ships in the era, the Shard Horse, get hit with the same, people call them a battlecruiser even though they're not, stick. While they do somewhat follow the GK philosophy of heavy armor, fast speed, but lightish firepower, the Germans considered them battleships, not a continuation of their World War One era ships. And Scharnhorst certainly qualifies as a battleship with a 350 mm belt, near enough to 14 inches, at its thickest. But, and here we come to an interesting question. Are they fast battleships, or just battleships that go fast? Remember that the key feature we've established of a fast battleship is that she must not sacrifice heavily for her speed. At this point, of course, design has advanced enough that it isn't really necessary to sacrifice much in armor or firepower for speed, provided you're willing to eat a hell of an increase in displacement and length. But with these ships, well, Dunkirk, and to a lesser extent her more heavily armored sister Strasbourg, certainly get hit with less armor. But then, they were really intended to counter cruisers up to the Panzer Schiff, more so than modern battleships. They could certainly make a good showing against the old Italian battleships, but not anything bigger or more modern. They didn't really have lighter armor to increase their speed, they had it to limit their tonnage and in reflection of their intended adversaries. Scharnhorst, meanwhile, was a very conscious decision on the Germans' part for more rapid firepower, along with reusing as much material as possible. These were ships that didn't sacrifice in firepower for their speed, they just happened to have smaller guns by intention and doctrine, which befits their role as surface raiders. So, I'd say they are fast battleships in a way the GKs weren't, but if you really want to go hard on without sacrificing armor or firepower, you can make the argument that they're just battleships that go fast, instead of anything like a formal fast battleship. Not that this is a formal term at all, as earlier established. Thankfully, the question is nowhere near as complex with, well, basically every other ship in this era. Every battleship built past Scharnhorst is a fast battleship. Full stop. They're all at least 27 knots in speed, they all have heavy firepower, and they all have heavy armor. While the ones still limited by treaty restrictions do make certain sacrifices in each of these categories, none of them make enough of a sacrifice to specifically gain speed to disqualify them from the definition we've established in this video. So in this, you have the British King George V class alongside the later Vanguard. The French have their Richelieu, 
the Germans brought Bismarck and the Japanese had Yamato, which is interesting in not having any real tonnage limits, but still having a modest speed in favor of going ham on armor and firepower. Italy had the Latorios, and of course the USN had three classes of fast battleship. North Carolina, South Dakota, and Iowa. Again, all of these ships are definitely fast battleships. They're not quite as fast as cruisers or destroyers, but they're one and all substantially faster than older battleships. And, again, none of them made any notable sacrifices in armor or firepower to gain that speed. With the caveat, I must note, that there are cases where a battleship had an equivalent design with even more firepower and armor, but at the cost of speed. A so-called slow battleship counterpart. So one could make the argument they sacrificed compared to that hypothetical design. This video isn't really the place to go into great detail on each of these ships, though, so I'll wrap up this section with two things. First, the Iowa class. This is a case where the ship was built entirely around her speed. The quintessential fast battleship focused on speed to the exclusion of just about anything else. Her armor was basically equivalent to the South Dakota, but she weighed substantially more to gain her speed and a more effective 16-inch gun. Iowa is a case where one can certainly say that she sacrificed potential firepower and armor increases for the speed, when one then takes a look over at Montana, where the speed remained the same, but she gained much heavier armor and a fourth turret. But that doesn't make Iowa disqualified from the more tight, without sacrifices, definition of a fast battleship. Even ignoring that Montana was never built, Iowa was still every bit as well protected, and better armed in fact, as her slower counterparts. So she is still a very firm fast battleship, no matter what definition you use. The second thing I'll note to end this section is the rebuilds. First, the Italian ones. They rebuilt their old World War I era dreadnoughts pretty drastically, and the ships that came out could be considered small fast battleships. As we've established, 27 knots is pretty average for that in this time frame. These ships are still very old though, and it shows in their light armor and firepower in comparison to more modern ships. So if you consider them fast battleships, or battleships that go fast after their rebuild, I'll leave that to you, since arguments could be made in both directions. They, regardless of anything else, are an example of Italian shipbuilding ability, for sure. If admittedly a wasteful one. Over in Japan, then, you had the Congo class. Battle cruisers that got rebuilt and redesignated as fast battleships. This is probably the big case where people can get into some truly heated arguments over what to call them. Not help that there are, apparently, contemporary communications and other such things that can't make up their mind on the Japanese side. I haven't personally seen these things, so I'm not going to comment on the validity or lack thereof of them, other than to say they may exist or they may not. I legitimately don't know. On an entirely personal level, I tend to prefer thinking of these ships as still being battlecruisers, just doing their best battleship cosplay, as it were. Now, as I keep saying, I try to always call ships what navies call them. So in referring to the rebuilt Congos, I'll sometimes call them battlecruisers, but I try to at least be fair to the Japanese in calling them battleships too. The fact of the matter, though, is that their armor was only marginally improved, and that still leaves them with what is fundamentally second-generation battlecruiser protection of the British style, which is not battleship-grade armor by World War II standards, excepting the Dunkirks, which, as mentioned, were intended to counter lighter ships to begin with. So this is another case where it really comes down to personal preference, at least in my book. With that done, I'll wrap this longer-than-expected video up with the initial question I had posed. What is the first fast battleship? If you're going with the full, strict definition that isn't a designation that we've laid out of makes no sacrifices of note for the speed, the answer is always going to be Queen Elizabeth. This ship is not seen as the first fast battleship in historical documentation for no reason. 
While she certainly couldn't make her lofty performance goals in service, she was still faster than most battleships, while having armor and firepower that improved on her predecessors in just about every way. This makes her the main option for a first fast battleship for good reason. Now this being said, one can make a very compelling argument that because the ships couldn't meet their lofty goals in service, that Nagato makes a better candidate. This is a ship that had basically similar protection to QE, heavier firepower, and faster speed that she could actually maintain. So I could see an argument based on actual performance that Nagato is actually the first fast battleship. The Treaty era ships are consistent fast battleships, but I wouldn't call any of them the first one, since the slowest of them is only marginally faster than Nagato. As for Regina Elena, well, I'll give her honorary grandmother status. She was certainly faster than any battleship of her era, but she just had to sacrifice so much for that speed that I can't really call her a fast battleship in the strictest sense. Good effort though, Italy. Good effort. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I hope to see you in the next video.